we're going to use colored cotton wool to make a model of the element neon. Each electron cloud around an atom is called an orbital. Orbitals aren't really made of colored wool. We're just using that here to show you how they're arranged around the atoms. Neon has 10 protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Atoms are very small, and of course, they don't use glue. But there are little particles called gluons. Now, how many neutrons do we need? Usually, neon has 10 neutrons, but there is a 0.27% chance of finding 11 neutrons and a 9.25% chance of finding 12 neutrons. Neutrons are not really tiny little cotton balls, but we're using them here to represent our neutron. If you're in a hurry, you can use just 10 neutrons. But for more fun, play this little game of chance to figure out how many neutrons to use. This comes from one of the Journey to Neon passports. First it says, put four blue shapes and one red shape in a cloth bag. If you pull out a blue shape, your atomic weight is 19.992. You, or atomic mass units. Once you have your atomic weight, you can round that up or down to get your mass number. Then you subtract the number of protons you have from this mass number. 20 minus 10 equals 10 neutrons. If you had pulled out a red shape, there would be two more steps you could take to find out if you had a different number of neutrons. You might need these two steps if you make your own neon. So now we're going to close that up. Here are our 10 electrons. But remember, every cloud only gets two. You can think of orbitals like the homes for the electrons. Only two electrons can fit in each orbital. An electron and its roommate. We need to put this first cloud inside of an electron shell. We're using something that isn't solid because we need to be able to put our other electron clouds through the shell. Those two electrons are now trapped inside that first shell. Now we'll make the electron cloud orbital homes that are in the second shell. We're going to use this dark color to represent our 2s orbital. I'm going to wrap it around my 1s orbital like this. I'm going to poke it with this skewer to make it so that it will stay on. The 2s orbital is thought to be round. Two electrons are still trapped inside of that first shell. The remaining eight are called the valence electrons. Let's get two more electrons. One. They'll be hard to see on black. But they're there. Two. Now we have six more electrons. Not all orbitals are thought to be round. There are three more orbital homes in the second shell. These are called p orbitals and they're thought to be sort of a dumbbell shape. We'll take the p orbitals one at a time and put them in the second shell. If we could, we'd pull this p orbital all the way through the shell because it's supposed to be one continuous dumbbell piece. But that would be hard to do, so just for 
ease of putting it in the shell, we're going to break it into two pieces and stuff it in with this skewer. This is what we might call the PX orbital. The PY orbital go at right angles to the PX orbital. One half of the 2PZ orbital would be sticking out of you like this. Now each cloud gets two electrons. Now each orbital has two electrons, and they're the ones that are the glue for this atom to stick to any other atoms and form a bond. Neon really doesn't usually bind to any other atoms, however, because every one of its electrons is paired up and happy with another electron already. If you wanted to add another proton and another electron to make the next element, that would have to go outside the second shell because this shell is full. I'll leave that one for you to do some other day.